Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to call the September 7th meeting of the Common Council to order. I am going to ask our clerk to call the roll. Alderperson Tenorio. Here. Vitali. Here. Weigel. Here. Grisham. Here. Haas. Here. Keen. Here. Lysak. Here. Frankie. Here. Rote. Here. Stefanski. Here. Ten present. We have a quorum. Um, our pledge tonight is going to be led by Alderman Tenorio, and at the conclusion of that pledge, I'm going to ask for a a uh, moment of silence for the 13 U.S. servicemen and women that lost their lives a few weeks ago in Kabul. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item D, we have five public hearings this evening, which we will go through. I am going to ask the clerk to read public hearing number one. Ordinance to convert site plan improvements sureties from mandatory to optional. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Our first hearing um, does away or makes it an optional uh, a condition of approval that frequently the plan commission imposes upon uh, business uh, or developers proposing site improvements. And it's, it's typically one more step uh, that's needed before getting a building permit. So the idea of this is that it really hasn't been used uh, effectively over the years or really for that matter at all. Uh, so with some of the larger projects that we have, um, for instance, like our uh, Six Points Farmer's Market area, 68th and Mitchell, it, it works pretty well. But for smaller business, smaller and medium-sized business, it's really uh, just another barrier to getting into business, to getting that building permit to put your addition on uh, and, and what have you. So we would like to make this an option for our planning commission or and, and be that as made at the county council to impose if you so feel uh, inclined. Otherwise, it would not be necessary or, or required. The Planning Commission has actually recommended approval. Uh, the, the change is really just changing a shall to a may within the ordinance. So it's a fairly simple change, the effects of which I think would uh, I think serve the community well, especially in terms of uh, getting a permit sooner uh, without one less, uh, with one less condition of approval. That concludes. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the Common Council on public hearing number one? Seeing none, are there any questions from the members of the audience on public hearing number one? Okay, seeing none, we will close our first public hearing and I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number two. Ordinance to amend the definition of a medical service facility and create a definition and regulations for narcotic treatment service facility. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, this, this ordinance uh, has two parts to it. Um, currently, uh, medical service facilities um, are, are allowed within the C3, C4, and M zoning districts and manufacturing zoning districts. Uh, what this ordinance does is first to change the definition of what a medical service facility is and then to define uh, what our narcotic treatment facility is, and then to then um, impose to then require uh, that uh, uh, the narcotic treatment facilities are allowed in the C4 and M districts, whereas right now the medical treatment facilities, as defined, are from C3 through the M districts. So again, the, the medical. I'll just read this. There's a lot of words here, but the the part, the key part here, I guess, is to look at is this. The medical service facility definition is being uh, redefined to an outpatient facility which provides blood or plasma donation services, kidney dialysis, birth center services, or treatment of sexually transmitted diseases. 
So it's taking out the uh, uh, treatment of alcoholism, chemical substance abuse. And the new definition of narcotic treatment faci uh, service facility is going to be a facility that exclusively provides an opioid treatment system that includes a physician who administers or dispenses a nar narcotic drug to a narcotic addict or treatment for detoxification, treatment with a comprehensive range of medical and rehab services. And then part two is approved by the state methadone authority and designated by the federal government's regulatory authority. And then part three is registered with the US Drug Enforcement Admin to a narcotic drug treatment for a narcotic addiction. So this is basically <coughs> adopting the state's definition of a narcotic treatment service and then introducing it within our zoning ordinance it within the C4 and M districts. Furthermore, um, as a permitted use, it's going to instill a, uh, or impose a, uh, a separation clause or a buffer um, between other, uh, between residential parcels or parcels with a school or a park or other uh, uh, narcotic treatment facilities. So that, in that buffer, we started out initially with the draft of this as a, with a thousand foot buffer. Um, and I'll get into the, how, that, how that'll look, some of the different options we looked at in terms of separation distances in a bit. But this, just for context here, is the, um, the overall um, C4 uh, zoning district area in red, and then the M zoning districts, the manufacturing zoning districts in purple. So these would be the areas where um, narcotic treatment facilities would be, would be allowed, uh, notwithstanding the, the separation that we're going to get into sep separately here in a, in a slide or two. So just to give you some idea of context, the existing C3 districts where medical service facilities are currently allowed is about 350 acres of the city. Uh, with this ordinance, um, places like uh, that, that offer uh, methadone or Suboxone uh, as a standalone facility are cur could currently be located in that C3 district. But with this ordinance, it would take them out of that, um, of that district and then put them into the C4 or the M district. So there's a, a supply of about 280 acres of C4 and then another 1,100 acres of, of M districts, M1 or M2. And then the, the little blue triangles that you see there are schools and then the existing facilities that that I know of, are, I guess, are Highway 100 National, and then there's another one on, um, on Theo Trekker um, on the northwest side of the city. So just taking a look at imposing a separation clause now with, from, other, from other residential areas, from other facilities, from schools and parks, if we impose a thousand foot buffer, there's really, there's very few parcels that would be um, eligible this happens to be our West Dallas fire station. Um, and there are some also areas on the fringe, but these fringe areas, you have to uh, keep in mind that um, while it, you know, it, it would be uh, 1,000 feet from other residential within our city, across the, the border, just north of 94, Wauwatosa has uh, residential. So that 1,000 foot uh, buffer here, this, this eligible area shown here in purple, isn't necessarily eligible when you consider the context of Wauwatosa. So the 1,000 foot really isn't a reasonable distance to impose with this ordinance. Taking a look at the 750 foot buffer, sort of the same thing. A few more properties start to, start, start to pop up here. A little bit of C4, some partial properties. Again, not, not reasonable. 500 foot starts to become a little bit more reasonable, um, you know, but really not a lot of commercial areas within the city. You know, some, I guess, on the fringes again, but one has to be cognizant of surrounding communities and where residential is located. What staff is recommending is a 250-foot separation buffer. This uh, opens up, really, some additional manufacturing properties on the northwest corner of the city, um, uh, within uh, sort of the west-central portion of the city within our manufacturing districts there. And then also, um, you know, some properties within the C4 uh, Regional Commercial District the Highway 100 National Area, um, as well as a little bit on the, on the eastern fringe. So it becomes more reasonable. Um, again, with, with this, the purpose of this ordinance is to take you know, the narcotic treatment facilities out of C3, they, then they go into C4 and the M districts, and then with a 250-foot buffer from parks, schools, residential, and other similar narcotic treatment facilities. So Planning Commission has uh, recommended approval back on August 22nd, and uh, we have received uh, no objections to date. 
Uh, one point I didn't mention, uh, but I would uh, here, I guess, is that this ordinance will not affect um, establishments like Rogers Hospital or Granite Hills uh, Hospital on 68th and Mitchell. Those are considered hospitals and they would be exempt from this ordinance. This is really based on just standalone facilities um, and that's, that's how this ordinance would work. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the Common Council on public hearing number two? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. Um, Steve, just a couple quick things. So this, of course, doesn't affect existing locations that are already in operation? You're correct. Good. And I assume that you contacted the city attorney's office to talk about the reasonableness of the this distance and the restrictions, so we're not going to find a court challenge on it, hopefully. And Correct, right, yeah, yeah. We came up, I mean, the, we initially started at 1,000 feet, mm -hmm. and then after you know, putting it into the, the, the geographic information system, it started to become pretty evident. And okay. yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Seeing none, are there any questions from the members of the audience on public hearing number two? Okay. Seeing none, we will close our second public hearing, and I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number three. Resolution relative to determination of an application for a special use permit for a proposed daycare to be located at 11112 West National Avenue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this property is uh, um, in a, within a multi-tenant commercial center on 111th and National Avenue, uh, the former location of a, a restaurant, uh, I believe a Vietnamese uh, pho restaurant. And uh, the, uh, the tenant um, who has been employed with uh, uh, daycare facilities uh, throughout her career is now interested in starting her own business and has found this location and is very excited to get into business um, and, uh, and start up a daycare facility. Daycare facilities within the C4 district are considered special uses, so that's the purpose of our hearing tonight. Um, so the former restaurant, uh, the, the, they will be serving children from six weeks of age to um, 12 years. Uh, they have a capacity of 90 uh, children and about 15 staff, it's estimated. The opening date, they're hoping uh, this, uh, this fall, November 1st, and then the hours of operation is indicated, uh, but basically uh, the, uh, the peak hours being, you know, the, your first shift and then your, your second shift. Um, but uh, they would ha also have some weekend hours from 8 to 4 p.m. <clears throat> The, uh, the overall site plan, they are proposing um, about 5,700 square feet of, um, of area, which is actually a little bit larger than that restaurant, so it's actually going to expand into another tenant space just uh, north of here. And uh, they are proposing two uh, play areas. There's an old uh, uh, landscaped area out in front here, which once served as an outdoor dining area, which will be converted to a, a small play area for the younger kids. And then the, the older kids will be playing on the west side of the building. Um, you'll notice the parking configuration to the west here. One of planning commission's recommendations was to eliminate these parking stalls here along the west side to prevent any kind of turning movements in close proximity to the outdoor play area. Um, and uh, so that will be done. And there's also additionally going to be landscaping around the perimeter of the play areas along with uh, a barrier. They're looking at some, uh, I guess, decorative rocks or boulders um, around that along with some perennial landscaping around the perimeter. Uh, just some site images, aerial views, and uh, gr ground views here, the future play area on the bottom. Uh, these parking stalls here would be eliminated, and then I guess just the existing, the existing site has some, some things that uh, staff is working with the ownership as well as the tenant on. There are some uh, refuse areas, uh, refuse containers, oops, behind the, the building which uh, uh, need some freshening it up, and those will be replaced. Um, the exterior of the building is going to be repainted, and um, I guess the, uh, the lighting, there's some neon lighting above along the roof line here that's going to be removed and then just not replaced. Um, new signage will also be installed on the, on the building. So the Planning Commission had t taken this up on August 22nd and has recommended approval. Uh, we have received no objections to date. Thank you. Are there any questions from the council on public hearing number three? Mayor Devine. Alderperson Grisham. Uh, Steve, uh, there's been a bit of turnover in that strip mall if I'm thinking the right location. There, um, and this would be a question, are there any bars, liquor stores within that area? Um, I, 
don't know. I don't, I'm trying to think. Um, I know we have uh, a couple restaurants within this facility, um, a bakery, uh, like a grocery store, a Home Depot across the street, fast food restaurants. Um, I think the nearest liquor store may be Highway 100 in Oklahoma. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Seeing none, are there any questions or comments from the audience on public hearing number three? Okay. Seeing none, we will close our third public hearing and I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number four. Resolution relative to determination of an application for a special use amendment for a proposed kitchen addition to the bake sale in the existing cafe located at 6923 West Beecher Street. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, the bake sale, uh, th their, their philosophy up to this point, they were in business, they, they started business earlier this, uh, this spring, um, converted an old office or small little uh, office to a, a, a bakery. Their, their motto has basically been to bring all the best bakery from all over the metro area to this location and then sell it at retail. Um, the purpose of this hearing tonight is that they would like to actually put an addition on the building, which would serve as a kitchen as well as storage for prep area and production. So actually being able to produce food, um, some of their own best, as well as sell the best. So uh, the existing building is about 900 square feet. The addition is uh, 1,700 square feet. Um, it's zoned C2 neighborhood commercial. Food production uh, limited is considered a special use within this area. This is just behind the building where the addition will take place, and I'll show you the site plan of that next, but this is the general location. Beecher Street is here on the north side, an alley on the, on the east, and then we have uh, 60, uh, actually 70th Street to the west. That's what it used to look like, and then this is the new look here. A small amount of outdoor dining in the front, new awnings, new windows, it's been repainted, so it's a, it's a fresh looking new building. So the hours of operation are really going to remain unchanged from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Uh, they do have some limited amount of seating within the building, two outside, and then the, uh, the kitchen area is really just going to be to uh, support the, uh, the addition of uh, you know, production. Just a floor plan view uh, showing the existing area up on the top, the darker blue, and then the proposed addition behind. The total area of the building will be 2,300 square feet once the addition is built. And there are um, the, the basically the cooler behind the building now. This is the existing site plan on the left. This is the proposed on the right. Um, there, is, there are about four parking stalls behind the building now. There's also a cooler behind the building. Those would be encompassed by the new addition, as would the shed. They are asking for um, a, vary, uh, a variance on the, uh, the vary the, for Common Council to vary the setback on the, uh, on the west side of the building. Um, it does meet all other setbacks. Uh, the parking spaces are also um, going to be reduced below what's typically required by our current zoning ordinance. Um, as required now, there's seven required, and um, I guess with the, uh, with the new addition, seven would be required and one would be provided on site uh, back in this area here. So that, that setback I was talking about will be on the west side of the building, uh, generally right here. The, uh, the zoning ordinance, uh, because this is a commercial property, the property of the West is also zoned commercial, but uh, used as a single family residence. Uh, and the, what the zoning ordinance says for the C2 district is that if you have a, a residential use next door, or the side yard setback should be 10 feet. So they are asking for, a, uh, for council to vary that. There is a, uh, this is just a picture of the existing look. So here's the existing building, and then the, uh, the fence, an existing fence for the residents. Uh, that fence is about six feet tall, and then that new um, building addition would be, you know, within two and a half feet of this fence. Uh, it will be masonry construction, um, painted to match the building. It shouldn't be an eyesore. We think it's going to be, uh, you know, a, a nice look to the building. So um, I, we haven't heard any complaints to date uh, from, from that uh, next door neighbor. Um, these are just some images of the exterior of the building. The existing here on the on the right, and then the new addition on the back. This is facing the alley, and then this is facing the west side. What the you know I guess over the top of the fence, what the neighbor would see would be right up here. 
and then behind the, the very south elevation looking back towards Beecher. So plan commission has recommended approval. Um, we have sent out notice to properties within 200 feet. No objections have been received to date. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions on public hearing number four from the council? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. Um, Steve, in as much as this is in our district, uh, I'm, I'm not one to raise the, uh, we're running on a parking issue, but I can tell you that Mr. Lutz's business has been very successful and we have been getting a little pushback from neighbors on parking, um, but that's not gonna be a deal breaker for me. My question is baking only. Um, some bakeries have deep fryers for making donuts and I think an exhaust fan blowing deep fryer into that neighborhood. I don't see the applicant here tonight, I don't think. Were there, were there discussions about that? Uh, no, but I mean, there would be uh, likely be a hood within the building. So well, a, I mean, hood, is, a hood yeah. in a bakery, I don't think, I think people yeah. all just smell of fresh yeah. bread or cookies yeah. or so There will, or I mean, no doubt uh, be an exhaust, you know, fan. Yeah. Um, you know, and we can, we can work with Mr. Lutz perhaps on, you know, what, which way that should be directed. If it yep. is coming out of the building, mm -hmm. ideally, you know, straight up, up yeah. uh, and away from uh, residences uh, as far as possible. So, <clears throat> Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Seeing none, are there any questions from the members of the audience on this public hearing? Okay, that'll close up public hearing number four and I will ask our clerk to read our final public hearing number five. Resolution relative to determination of an application for a special use permit to establish a mixed use, commercial and residential, of the existing residential duplex property located at 1416-18 South 81st Street. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is an existing duplex uh, zoned commercial. Um, now, this, just south of Pauly's Pub, so the, I guess the area map is up here, Greenfield Avenue, 81st Street. State Fair Park to the north side of Greenfield Avenue. So just south of Pauley's Pub, if you're familiar with it, is this duplex here. It is used as a, uh, a residential duplex, um, but what the applicant, uh, Mr. Paul and uh, Christine uh, uh, Budiak, the owners of this property are proposing is to, uh, because it is zone commercial, it's like a little bit more flexibility and the ability to use the backyard area for a tent and a stage. Um, the uh, uh, that, that's, I guess, the, the proposed use. And then they can use that uh, in this manner if, if the zoning's approved. And uh, it would also uh, go without saying, I guess it would go with saying here that if the activity it'd be allowed as long as it does not include the service or sale of alcohol um, and complies with the zoning. So the property is zoned, the pub property here, the duplex, and then to, you know, further down here, this is all zone C2 neighborhood commercial. Um, so the zoning is in place, it's just a matter of going through the special use process, essentially to get an allowance to use the uh, uh, yard, this property for a tent and a stage. And that's the general location between the two buildings. This is a plan view looking down, I guess Pauley's Pub again up here along Greenfield Avenue, 81st Street on the left. And then this is the subject duplex property and then the location of the tent and stage. You'll see this is a licensed premise here of Pauley's Pub. That licensed premise does not extend south to this duplex property. So there again, there can be no service of alcohol um, from, from this area. This is not gonna be a bar. Um, that's not what the purpose of this special use is this evening. It's really just to um, utilize the backyard area for a tent and a stage, which is accessory, which would be accessory, I guess, to the, to the bar property. There are some outdoor events that take place here. So we looked at a few options um, with the applicant, um, you know, if not uh, to put a, uh, a tent in the backyard here, what else could you do? Well, you could, I guess option A, you could relocate the tent to, from this property and just put it on this property over here, that's one option. Option two is what's being presented tonight as a special use, to have a tent and a stage in the backyard to get the special use. And then part three would be a larger scale, a longer range perhaps project to actually raise the duplex, combine the two properties as one premise, and then have, you know, 
the configuration uh, of, a, uh, of a tent and a stage uh, in, one, in one larger property. So the applicant's chosen to pursue option B, the special use at this time. And then there are some site and landscaping um, changes that are, have, are underway and uh, are also proposed. The garage behind uh, on the backyard here has been resided and reshingled. Uh, there's a fences planned along the uh, east property line, both of the Pauley's Pub property, then back behind the duplex and then further south. And then um, the stage, just of note, does meet the fire department permit requirements for, uh, for access and for uh, uh, safety. So there has been a uh, notice that's been sent out to properties within 200 feet. That's what this green line is here. These are the properties that have been notified. Um, class two notice, and about 33 properties. The Planning Commission has recommended approval and I have not received any objections to date. Thank you. Are there any questions from the Common Council on our final public hearing this evening? Mayor Devine. Go ahead. I don't know who Jinx. got first there. You, want me a drink? You, go, you go right ahead. Alder Person Key. Um, does, is the tent plan to stay up all year? Um, is it going to be a permanent fixture all year long? Is it going to be? No. I, uh, I'm not, you know, I guess I could speak with the applicant afterward, but I don't believe it's going to be a year round fixture. He's just looking at it during during uh, outdoor festival or event type of season, he wants to have the option to, uh, to utilize the tent uh, you know, in that location. Um, one point that was uh, the applicant had indicated is that with the location, the way that's situated, um, if it were, if the tent were relocated, I mean, we did look at that option of relocating the tent to the Pauley's pub property. The problem with that is that then the sound is then projected potentially you know, to the east or and or west uh, in a more direct focus towards residential, whereas the way the tent is situated now, if it's to be kept and allowed on that residential property, it's faced south towards State Fair Park so, so as to minimize the, the sound into the neighborhood. And that alley is vacated, right? That's Yes. Yeah. All the person, Grisham? Uh, Steve, um, this tent proposal um, just to clarify, um, may not be permanent, but being it is a request for a special use through license and health, it's kind of putting the cart before the horse as to whether it would be approved. Um, and that's just a general statement. <laughs> Secondly, um, in consideration of the sale of that property in the future, if it is rezoned, could that property then be used as a makeshift automobile repair shop out of the garage because it's now zoned as a commercial and residential? Um, I guess only if it would come before council and council would authorize, uh, you know, an auto repair facility on that on that location. So it, yeah. it potentially could be because it'd be zoned as a commercial. Yeah, I mean, and it, residential. It's, yeah, it's currently zoned commercial. Um, so I guess if someone wanted to uh, run an, uh, and this is just zoning talk, so I mean someone could <laughs> run an auto repair shop out of that, you know, but again, there are gonna be certain codes, you know, building codes and so on for, you know, repairing vehicles within a structure. It would have to be properly separated from other residential uses and so air makeup systems and so on. Okay, and determination of sound from residents, how is that determined by, by pushing that back? Because right now the stage when it was set up, it's set up to face Greenfield Avenue, correct? Correct. Now it just would be set back how many feet still facing Greenfield Avenue? Yeah, so in, in the current location is, is where uh, that they would like to keep that tent. You know, so it is currently in the backyard of that, of that duplex property and it, would, it wouldn't be, it would be in that same location you know, going forward if, if allowed by, by council. Okay, um, um, secondly, uh, well, thirdly, um, was the plan commission informed about the pushback from the residents on this as far as live music? Yes. So that was taken into consideration? Yes. Okay. I mean, the, the, so the planning commission um, looked at it. I mean, they were made aware of what the, you know, the 
existing license, well, actually the, the past extension of premise, it, I think it just ended on September 6th. So, uh, but they were ma made aware of, of those conditions that, you know, the License and Health Committee imposed with 100 decibels at 100 feet, and I don't want to start, I don't want to go on because I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I understand of me, yeah. the yeah. format of right, that. Right, um, yeah. The last question I would have is relative to what Alderwoman Keene stated of the alley being vacated. Um, that alley entrance and exit still remains open, although it's vacated. How right. does that work? Uh, so when the, when the uh, alley was vacated, uh, half of it went to the duplex property owner and half went to the, uh, the pub owner, uh, both of which are the same owner. But so they, you know. So it's, we're it's, speaking from 81st Street to 80th Street, that entire stretch of the entire alley. Um, well, actually, I, I think it stops no, it mid, that midway. It just stops midway. Yeah, yeah, okay. right. All right, but that's going to remain open for access to drive in and out, need be. That's uh, the parking, because I believe yeah. that they use it for in and out parking when there isn't tents there. Yeah, currently that's the, the site plan we have shows that, that drive remaining open, uh, not being closed. Okay, and Mr. Budiak is responsible for all snow removal and maintenance of that set area? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the Common Council? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. Um, so this is ordinance, the zoning change would essentially bring him in compliance, would bring into compliance what he's been doing. The stage is gonna stay in the same place. Yes. Um, I've already been receiving complaints from the neighbors in the apartment building to the east about the noise. Um, the alley, the middle of the alley is the southern boundary of the licensed premises. Is that correct? That is correct. In fact, let me just go so, back a couple slides here. Just so to I guess I haven't been there on foot when they've been doing that so even with the zoning change drinks can't cross the imaginary line that runs down the middle of that vacated alley and they certainly can't be on stage for band members to enjoy or anything that, that's I mean that's that's, that's if we're going to go letter right? of the law yeah. if we're going to be really nitpicky yeah. about this so yeah the, the license premise is I mean this is the uh, imposed uh, you're over the over the aerial view of the GIS, but yeah. the yellow yellow line with the red dashed the dotted line, office. and that runs on the yeah. middle of that vacated right, alley. Right, right, yeah. So yeah. these gray, I don't know if you can see, but the gray lines on either side are the you know the rough boundaries of you know the, the alley that was vacated here. So pretty much right down the center is the edge of the light, the south edge of the licensed premise. Right, and the the north edge of the stage is not in the middle of the alley; it's on the southern boundary of the alley, I assume. Right. Think. I don't want to rely on this, but yeah, no, this is a no. rough estimate of where that I tent understand. sits. I, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get things in my head square. Sure. You know, I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but I mean, if we're we're trying to make an adjustment here, um, like I said, already been and and the question was asked about doing year round. I can't imagine anybody's going to do year round. They're not going to do live music in January or February, maybe a Super Bowl party or something. But do you know is it the intent of the applicant to continue regular weekly concerts next summer? Is is that what's driving this, or is this just to bring him into compliance for this year? This is to bring him into compliance for this year, as well as looking ahead to the future, okay. uh, offer a little bit more flexibility for outdoor events. Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. With the, Thank you. With the idea of a tent in the stage. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Mr. Mayor. Alderman Vitale. Yeah, Steve, I have a question. So based on the, uh, you know, the way I see it uh, with the planning and changing the uh, duplexes, uh, so the fact that it's per se, if, if we approve that, so how can he determine uh, at this point next year, he have the uh, License and Health Committee or the uh, Common Council will allow additional uh, days of operations, you know, I mean, uh, how, how can you, uh, we can change something, but it's nothing on the books until I believe next year. So how, how can, you know, the applicant apply for something like that to the conversions of the uh, duplex from residential to commercial just as well, but how, how can he, uh, in the future, he can come forward that, and per se the uh, council will really agree upon some of the uh, dates of the, uh, you know, by expanding, and that's what basically that's what it looks like. So I mean, uh, so so what's the purpose uh, of uh, 
doing this now because we're going to uh, allow him to have a more uh, activities or events, I mean, uh, throughout the uh, spring or summer. I mean, I, I have no idea, really, at this point. You know, for us to, uh, to approve something like that, you know, what will be the future? You know, that's, that's my question, really. We don't know. That's the unknown. Well, I, kn I know he's, he's looking ahead uh, towards, you know, this, this fall perhaps having a couple outdoor events while the weather is still nice. So yeah. to take advantage of the, of the, of the, <coughs> of the season. Um, in the fall, and um, but then you know, planning ahead for the next year, um, you know, he's he's looking ahead there too. He'll be, I'm sure, you know, with you know the uncertainty of uh, you know the pandemic and things, and and just the fact that when it's nice out, people like to be outside. So he's just taking advantage and wanting to be proactive and create a space outdoors for people to enjoy. Um, the tent, you know, being placed at that in that particular area again. It, the way, way he told me was that it, it projects sound then towards the State Fair Park versus the, the neighbors. So he's, he wants to be respected of the neighborhood as well. Mayor Devine. Thank you. Oh, Alder um, Person Keen. I'm sorry. Is the current property our just residential now, or is it already zoned commercial and residential? Uh, it's, it's zoned. Everything here along 81st Street is zoned C2, neighborhood commercial. Um, but yeah, the uses. I mean, in this case, the the du it's a residential duplex within a you know on a C2 uh, neighborhood commercial zoning, which is <coughs> typical, I guess, for this the zoning district that that happens. I mean, the the zoning does allow that. Um, so whether we change this or not, I mean, it's technically commercial. That a year, two years, five years from now, <coughs> if someone could come before and ask for an actual retail or commercial use, it would come before the council. So us. Sure. Proving or denying this, if it's not used for the intended use specifically for a tent in a yard, it would have to come before Common Council. Something else, yeah. If it's not going to be used for a tent in a stage, then it could, you know, if somebody wants to change it to a, you know, like an office on the ground floor with a, an apartment above, I mean, that would come back to us for a mixed use as well, right? Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the Common Council? Mayor Devine. Alder Person Reinke. Has been clarified that um, Mr. Pauly owns this property where this is going to take place if That's correct. the council approves it? Correct, yes, okay. he does own it. Uh, yeah. Have the pro uh, adjacent property owners been notified so we can also get their input in this decision making process? Yes, uh, within 200 feet, about 33 property owners uh, within, uh, within 200 feet have been notified around this area, around the subject property, yeah. I see, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions from the council on public hearing number five? Okay, uh, are there any questions from the audience on public hearing number five? Okay, hearing none, we will close our fifth and final public hearing and we will move on to item E on our agendas which is citizen participation. This is where the council can receive um, information from members of the public during this 30 minute period. Each speaker must announce to the council his or her name and address, sign in on the podium, and limit comments to one statement of no more than five minutes. The council cannot take action on topics raised by the speakers and cannot discuss the topics with the speakers. So is there anybody here this evening that wishes to address the council under citizen participation? If you do, you can approach the podium and the microphone. Thank you. My name is Jonathan Wickman. I'm the Republican candidate for governor. My address is 6955 South Riverwood Boulevard. Uh, Tracy invited me tonight to introduce myself. I'm running for governor of Wisconsin because I truly believe that the state is going in the wrong direction. I'm really glad to see that West Dallas is pro-business, especially for small businesses. I've been all throughout the state and our small businesses have taken a really big ding, to say the least. Our bars and our restaurants that were locked down and closed down uh, last year. So I just wanted to come and introduce myself to the good people of West Dallas. Again, Jonathan Wickman, running for governor, Republican candidate. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tracy, for the invite. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation? Go ahead. I need you. I'm sorry, ma'am. I need you on the microphone just so we can all hear you. 
Okay, we have a petition going that we do not want to bar at, uh, I think it's 7435 or 7534 West uh, Beloit Road. First of all, we don't like the name G-Spot. That's very derogatory. We don't like the hours, 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. They already have a bar that opens at 6 a.m. Everybody likes how quiet it's been since it, hasn't, since it hasn't been opened as a bar. There's no noise, no littering, no urinating in the alley or on Beloit Road. No fighting, they almost killed somebody with the last bar. No speeding up and down the alley. There's no parking for a bar. We have had rats, and since the bar doesn't have garbage dumpsters up there, which they never close, we don't have that problem. We want the alley blocked off if this does go through. They always enter where it says the do not enter sign. And there's little kids in the alley, and there's strangers that are going up and down trying to figure out what we have going on. So we do not want a bar. That's at all possible. Can we have, I'm sorry, can we have your name and address, please? Oh, I'm sorry, Judy Schmidt, 2521 South 75th Street. Thank you. And do you have other people with you that oh, yes. they can just raise their hands if they want to? So I, I see the council can see everybody in the audience. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your comments. Um, does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation? My name is Melissa Shruby. This is my husband, Glenn Shruby. And actually, you are going to be voting on whether or not we can have a license granted for the um, 7524 Blight Road. So we came last week and had our like preliminary sort of vote. And we were just then told about all of these issues that we did not, we were not aware of how this bar was managed, mismanaged, and how it affected your community. And I am very, very sorry that you guys had this kind of bar. I, I would be mortified if that was my neighborhood. I, I just, I tried to get police reports to find out what all was going on. And I heard there's like 200 and something calls and it's gonna take 10 days. So I can't even address a lot of the, the issues because I didn't even know what they were until we've heard this. So that being said, um, my husband and I have a bar in District 1. It is a successful bar. And it was a successful bar for a very long time, just like Sir Gregor's was, or Gregory's, I think it was, successful for a very long time. And then through mismanagement and whatever else, same thing happened to this bar. Um, when we came in, we were told or recommended that we even change the name of the bar because the reputation was so bad that no one would come back and that we would not be able to be successful. We did not change the name. What we did was we changed the bar. We changed our relationship with the community. We have all of the, almost all of the customers that didn't, were said they would never step foot in that bar again, are now customers again. Um, we are not absentee owners. We are there every single day. We maintain our bar, um, the outside, the inside. Our structure is five feet away. Our, our bar is nestled in between two residential houses. Our structure is five feet away from their side doors. We have no issues, no complaints, no problems with the neighbors. The neighbors have children. We have n never received a complaint. Our neighbors are welcome to, our neighbors are now our customers. They are always welcome to call us with any concerns. And I know that it was, we are not afraid of hard work. Um, I am not a slum lord. I, I do not want to come in and destroy your community. I know that it was kind of a meeting place for everybody and I feel like it could be that again. So I cannot take ownership or responsibility for what that other person did. My responsibility comes in in making sure that this never happens again and that you do not have a disruption in your neighborhood like you did. I understand the alley is an issue. Um, we were going to do something like one way. There would only be five spots. We were thinking about making them only handicap spots. And the reason we were gonna do that is because we have opening at six in the morning. We have a lot of retired gentlemen that come in and that's our bar currently is open at 6 a.m. until two. So that they would be mirroring the same hours. Um, so we were thinking about doing that. Then the residents could still use it to leave out of onto Boyd Road, but there would never be anybody leaving into your neighborhood ever. Um, they would just be coming in and they would only be coming in if they were handicapped. So. Uh, you know, that, that kind of would help. We don't want to deter people that can't walk far distances <coughs> from coming to the bar. Uh, another thing is that we know that Sir Gregory had food. Gregory, Sir Gregory's had food. Um, we wanted to like maybe get pizza going again, have something that people could 
around the neighborhood come back and have what they used to. I guess he had fantastic pizzas. I don't know. I've never had one, but I heard they were great. I know another problem is that there was violence. Um, I did not hear about that again. They do not have cameras at all in that facility. The first one of the first things we would be doing was install security cameras. Our staff, ourselves, we see what's going on around our bar all, all the time because we have camera, a cam a TV in the bar that shows us exactly what's going on. We don't allow um, drugs. People, we know what's going on in the back, we know what's going on in the sides. We don't allow misconduct in our bar. And we've been very lucky because I'm very proud of our bar. I'm very proud of our customers. I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Ruby, you've got one minute left. That's fine. Yeah, just so you know. Thank you. Sure. Um, so cameras would be another thing. And then um, the biggest thing is that my husband and I are so dedicated to making this work that we would actually be selling our home in Menominee Falls and buying not only the bar, but the house next door. And we would be residents of that house. So I would be your neighbor. Anything going on that bar would be happening to me as well. And I'm hoping that that shows, you know, we, we're going to be putting a lot of money, a lot of time a lot of dedication to this. into this, and no one has more to lose than I do, because if this fails, it is just a vacant property that I paid for that I'm sitting next to looking at every day. Well, I think it's a fun plan where it's going to be sports <laughs> related. I thought it's, it was fun. It's a sports bar. That's what it I, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it, it is, it is, it's like games, like sports, it, it'll be absolutely 100%, it will be, it will be um, absolutely sports related and it will be sports themed and nothing inappropriate, there will be no inappropriate signage, anything like that. So it will be Packer oriented, sport oriented. I know, it does, it does, it, once you get it though, then it's like, oh, that's not that bad, right? Kind of? Okay. Um, anyway. So you're at five minutes, so if you could That's just wrap it. up, anyway, please. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you, and I thank hope that uh, you take this into consideration. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. If there's anyone else that wishes to address the council, please approach the podium. Give us your name and address. Hi, Tammy Dopp, 1303 South 73rd, and I also own Dopp's Bar, which is right next to the doghouse. And I want to tell you, I've known Glenn way before I owned a bar, and then when I, he said he was going to buy a doghouse, I'm like, are you nuts? You own a bar? Anyway, and then I met his wife, Melissa. And those two out of the four bars that are in my neighborhood, they have been communicatable. They've been, um, we, we let each other know what's going on in the neighborhood. And then when I heard they were going to buy another bar, but they're going to live there, I just want to say that I support them. And I still think you're crazy, but, um, but I think they're going to clean up. What I didn't know either that all that stuff was going on there, but that's what happens when you don't, are not a hands-on bar owner. So I just want to say good luck to them, and I support them. Thank you. My name is Darrell Wagner. I live ac directly across from the proposed bar site from St. Greg's. And I've got to tell you, one of the big problems I've got is people using that alley to access Blue Light Road. Their headlights shine directly in my windows all the time. Uh, one of the problems when it was one more was that you had people parking and using the west side of that building. It's a paved area as an outdoor patio, there was cussing, there was swearing, they were drinking after hours with solo cups outside, uh, three, four o'clock in the morning. Then they had metal dumpsters on the east side of the building that they dumped the bar garbage in, again, three, four o'clock in the morning, the bang from the covers coming down, bottles being dumped. Um, this place is, a, is not a great place for a bar. I think a better use would be a mom and dad cafe, an internet cafe, uh, a small restaurant of some sort, but I definitely don't think this neighborhood wants, there are 52 of us that signed that petition. We do not want a bar at that location. Thank you. Can Thank we have you. your address, please? I don't know, you said you were across the street. I'm 7535 West Beloit. Thank you. So. Hello, my name is Teresa Wrench and I'm three bars from, three houses away from the bar. From my experience that I have seen being three um, houses away from the bar, at night there was drunk uh, patrons that were yelling, talking loud, fighting, throwing up, peeing in my yard, sitting in my yard, sitting on my porch because they were drunk. They, I called the police, either the police didn't come on time or they didn't show up at all. Meanwhile, you're hearing the swearing and that such. 
in the holiday, when the fall or the winter comes, the cars are parked in front of my house. I cannot shovel, the plows come through, the cars are from the bar there. Some leave their cars overnight. I cannot <laughs> shovel that when the plow comes through, they shove it back onto my sidewalk. Um, there's noise, as the gentleman said there before, the bottles being thrown in the dumpster at night. They sit outside the bar, they talk, they, you can smell the cigarette smoke in the air. My daughter has asthma and it's hard for her. Um, people have sat in their cars um, smoking um, weed and that you can smell it because they're right side of my house and they have the windows up or down and they're talking and smoking or drinking in the cars. In my yard, I have found bottles, food, um, unmentionable stuff, uh, pee in, in bottles in my yard and on the um, area sidewalk. Um, my daughter and I, we work early in the morning. I don't want a bar there where I'm afraid to come out of the house, having somebody in the backyard. We have bushes. If there are some, there has been some altercations with that bar that they had and with the rising things of violence right now, I don't want to have to be fearful of coming out and having somebody in the yard or um, violence that are going on because there's an altercation with other pa patrons from there. Um, we have dogs in the neighborhood, so patrons are coming out. They, the dogs bark when they hear noises, so you're constantly hearing the barking from the dogs when we have that bar. And then at my age, I'm uh, fearful that I'm going to have retaliation if I call the police on one of the patrons or so. And at my age, I don't have to feel that I have to put up a video camera inside, outside of my house for fear that, you know, somebody's going to come and retaliate to break into my house. Plus, it's been quiet where we have deliveries to our house from FedEx and that. Now with more traffic going on, somebody can take anything off my porch now. And because I'm on the street, it's easier accessible. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation? Go ahead. Hello. My name is John Daschek. I live on 2536 South 76th Street. Um, lived there 14 years, so I've dealt with Sir Gregory's Pub and one more. One more was worse. But uh, I fear for my daughter's safety in a way because she's three and a half years old and we walk the alley and she rides her bike in the alley and those cars would fly through the alley when they leave the bar and you tell them to slow down, either they just ignore you or they would shout a profanity. Um, and then hearing the profanity at 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning and just, it's been so nice since it's been closed. It's been nice and quiet, it's been peaceful and I just worry about the alley, that's my biggest concern and you know, my fellow neighbors and everything too with the sound and everything else. So, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Isaac Hernandez. I live at uh, 2518 South 76th Street. That's about maybe five or six houses from this lo lo location where this bar is at. Uh, I'm strongly against it because uh, one, one thing is personal experience, uh, a drunk driver, and I'm not saying he came from one night drinking at that bar that was at that location, but it was about two, three in the morning, I'm zipping down 76th Street, banged into our tree, front of our house, directly in front of us. The tree is gone. Van flipped over on his side. Firemen had to come, they had to cut him out, bring him out of the, his car. Guy survived, thank God for that. But uh, it's incidents like that. I got grandkids and, and that alley, uh, we just don't need that. So um, strongly against it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation? Hi, uh, my name is Colleen Volland and I have a business at 7105 West Greenfield Avenue and I'm, uh, I wanted to speak in support of Line 58 to adopt the state standards for automatic sprinkler systems. It'll make it possible for my business to expand their class offerings. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else under citizen participation this evening?
Hi, my name is Nicole Ranch. I live on 70, 7512 West Bullet Road. I am strongly against this, this bar or G spot, whatever you want to call it. I don't particularly care for the language, the foul language, the yelling, the puking, the condoms that you find on the floor or the ground. They're displayed everywhere. When the snow melts, you can find red solo cups, everything. You can find it there in front of our yard. They sit on our porch and they just hang there. They will talk vulgar words to each other. There will be arguments, yelling, cussing, you name it. They'll have banters, that we, like my neighbors mentioned, their dogs will bark because they hear movements, you know, they're protecting their families. But once they start barking, they don't stop until they leave. You'll have people knocking on their windows, which is inappropriate, two in the morning. I start early in the morning. I shouldn't be hearing this. I shouldn't be hearing anything. We have kids in our neighborhood. They'll be coming down the aisle, the alleys. It's not right. We want future kids here. And they're, they come down drunk down our aisles. So I strongly don't agree with this. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Okay, seeing none, we will close citizen participation. And moving to item F, um, our standing committees will be meeting during recess. And those room numbers are on page two of your agendas. <coughs> Moving on to item G, the mayor's report. I just have a couple things this evening. Um, a few weeks ago, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, we had some incredible storms come through the city. And I've been publicly thanking the crews and everybody involved that helped with cleaning that up. The city lost over 120 trees and the public works department got around 1,000 calls for service. Now I'm sure some of those were duplicate calls about the same tree, but our crews were stretched very thin and there were also some neighborhood groups and some organizations that were out helping clean up with their chainsaws. So the community and the city really came together and I just wanna commend everybody who was involved in taking care of that. It sounded like it went right down Beecher pretty much from Highway 100 to about 68th Street. And a lot of the damage you might've seen driving through the community was along that corridor, but I just wanna thank our forestry crew, our streets and sanitation crew, everybody in public works and everybody who just helped out in getting that cleaned up in what I would consider a very timely manner. And the other thing I wanna just bring up tonight is that uh, a couple Fridays ago, there was a grand opening or ribbon cutting for a new restaurant in town, which you may or may not have heard of, but it was called The Wrestling Taco. And it is at 1606 84th Street and it is a uh, Luca Libre Mexican wrestling theme Mexican restaurant. And they have very good food. They're in that strip mall on 84th Street in about Lapham. So if you wanna go try a new place, they are open and would be happy to see you. That does conclude the mayor's report this evening. Moving on to item H, do we have any alder persons reports? Mayor Devine. Alder person Keen. Um, I just wanted to actually thank um, Mr. Quintel Robinson, the owner of Legacy Cuts at 1041 South 84th Street, 84th and Washington. He actually reached out um, wanting to do a book bag drive. Um, he's actually a new business owner and already asking how he can be involved in the community. Um, so we were able to fill over 60 backpacks, had bounce houses, um, barbecue, face painting, um, and I just really wanted to thank him and all the volunteers for such a great event um, and helping out in the community. Thank you. Any other older persons reports? Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the minutes of August 3rd, 2021 and June 15th, 2021 Common Council. Second. second. There's a motion and a second. Any changes or amendments to those minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Moving to the standing committee reports. License uh, and health. Uh, I think. Mayor Devine. Oh, all the person wrote. If we could separate out item 11 and item 14. Item 11 just on a separate vote. And item 14, I would like to refer back to um, committee for site and landscape and screening review and engineering review. And that will be this evening? 
I would like to know. We'll have to give them time to uh, okay. to their report. Okay. I guess it would be at the next regularly scheduled uh, licensed and health meeting. Okay. Which is the fourth. Fourteenth. Yeah. Yeah, Alderman Road, I, I could I could second your uh, wishes, your uh, emotion, you know, to to bring you want to bring item 14 back to uh, committee for further discussions. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and 11 as a separate vote. Separate vote. So let's move 14 first. Okay, so it's been moved. And then seconded, seconded. by Alderman Vitale. Yes. Is there uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, item 14 is sent back to committee. Mayor Devine, um, I, didn't vote I, I didn't vote aye on 14, um, only because can we have discussion on that this evening? It's not just site plan, but being we have the audience that we have. Let's turn over the city attorney. Mr. Mayor, if an item's referred back to committee, the committee can handle it tonight in any manner the committee sees fit, including further discussions or holding it to the next meeting. Okay, and in that uh, forum, if we so chose to hold after the discussion we could do that yes it's back essentially it's back in before the committee as though nothing had been done and you're starting over uh, with your discussions right now that, that would be what would happen if referred back to committee okay and i know that there's a motion on the floor so if no disrespect I, um we can vote on it as it sets otherwise uh i would be up for discussion this evening okay. but i don't know how that goes protocol wise i think the vote has to go 14 go to go back to committee and then we I think it's already referred to committee because yeah, it's so passed, it so it's a question up to the chair. If okay, so it's up to the chair whether we would have discussion on it this evening. Well, I don't think we need any further discussion, so once it was voted on it to bring forward uh, to the License and Health uh, Committee meeting. But again, you know, uh, when you have a uh, neighborhood and you have uh, 52... Well, uh, Alderman Vitelli, yeah. let's stick on the motion before we opine yeah, on the, the merits. Okay. I just let's, want to clarify that. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I just want to make sure we know where this is going and when yeah. before we debate it. So. Mr. Mayor. Attorney Decker. The motion to, ref to refer to committee had already passed. So this item's already in the committee level. Um, I treated Alderman Woman Grisham's comment as a point of information, so Thank you. I, I don't think there's any further reason to discuss this. So it'll have to be done at committee level. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can Thank just, you. yeah that's fine. Thank you. Okay, then, um, Madam Clerk, on what's left on our agenda, and then separate action item 11. Mayor Devine, I would also like item 13 acted upon separately. Okay. Any other items for separate action off the License and Health Committee this evening? So we can go ahead with item 8. It's the balance, if Madam Clerk, eight, you want to read nine. that out? Or? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Dan? Clerk's got it. Okay. You got it, right? <laughs> I'm just... I'll try. <laughs> the License and Health Committee recommended approval of items 9, 10, 12, and 16. They recommended denial of item 15. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Alderman Vitale. I I move for approval of the recommendations of the License and Health Committee meeting. Thank you. Any other discussion on those items? <clears throat> Hearing none, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. And now we have item 11 in front of us. The Order. committee recommended approval of item number 11. Alderman Vitale, do you want to make the yeah, motion? Yeah, make a mo motion based on the uh, voting of the uh, License and Health uh, Committee meetings. On item 11. I Any discussion on 11. item 11? Item yeah. 11. I have a question, Mayor Devine. Alderman Haas. Yeah, what was the vote in License and Health, and if there were dissenters, what were their reasons? I was the dissenter. I, I just, uh, neighborhood. I, I talked to, I went to two. <coughs> non-sanctioned city block parties probably two weeks beforehand and um, they were aware of it and they said pretty much like short version how many liquor stores do we need in West Allen and I really couldn't do it on proximity to the school because it's a 600 foot rule door to door but I think they're less than 600 feet from door to quarter mile <coughs> track. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I just want to point out that um, I grew up in that neighborhood and there has been 
um, a liquor license in that establishment since the 1960s. Uh, it's been vacant for a couple of years because the owner uh, uh, of the Parthenon retired. His son took over the business and moved it to 84th and Greenfield to a bigger, newer store. And I have no problem with the uh, a, a liquor license being at that establishment. There's never been any problems there, and I don't anticipate any problems in the future. The applicant has experience. He already owns a liquor store in Milwaukee. Uh, there's been no problems there, and so I would recommend a yes vote on this. Mayor Devine. Alder person Grisham. Um, I have to mention that uh, the gentleman who wants to open this business came forward with a very well thought plan. Not only did he discuss what he wanted to do with this operation, and as uh, Alderman Lysak said, is an experienced business owner, um, he came with a presentation that he actually went to 70 plus neighbors in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. got signatures, took the time to speak with every individual neighbor that he could yep. speak with and they all signed that they were in favor of him coming to this location. So one of my greatest concerns and questions that I um, presented was the, the proximity to the school, which is Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, I believe Alderman wrote, and I disagreed on the distance to the track and field, which where they do sports is on the backside of the school and nowhere really near the, the uh, proposed business itself. But, uh, this is going to be strictly a liquor store. I would have had reserve or, or more reservation if there was, you know, food, beverage, things like that, that kids would want to come in for that. Obviously, it's liquor, so they're not going to be able to go in. But there's going to be no groceries, no attraction for children to come in, um, even the middle schoolers. Uh, so I, I was very uh, pleased with the presentation, and I feel very confident that we have um, a, a very... Uh, welcomed person in our community for this business. Thank you. Any other discussion on item 11? Hearing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Elder Person Tenorio? Aye. Vitale? Aye. Weigel? Aye. Grisham? Aye. Haas? Aye. Keen? Aye. Lysak? Aye. Ranky? Aye. Rote? No. Stefanski? Aye. Nine in favor, one opposed. Nine to one, motion carries. And now we have, I'll ask uh, to read out item 13. The License and Health Committee recommended denial of item number 13. Alderman Vitale, you wanna? Yeah, I, I will. Uh, uh, move the uh, motion. Yeah, I, I make the motion uh, to, uh, to reinst not reinstate, but to have the applicant come forward uh, Oh, can't do that. Again, I, I believe we could do that. I'm <laughs> requesting if we could do that. No, you have to actually move the committee's report at this point yeah. to share, so and that was to deny. deny. Yeah, for, I mean, I, based on what I seen, you know, we. Uh, well, let's get the motion in front of us before we yeah. debate. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that was a motion. That was a motion. Yes. Okay, Alderman Vitale, you want to speak on the motion? Yeah, I speak the motion based <laughs> on the. <laughs> let me. Uh, Based on the uh, fact that uh, the applicant, uh, you know, and many other uh, uh, gas stations, they do provide uh, a beer liquor license. So I, I'm, I'm start kind of uh, sometimes thinking or uh, be concerned for us to start denying some of the uh, people, you know, with that same type of a business for be uh, license. Yeah. And then we have been issued uh, a license already for uh, gas stations for B license. That, that's one of my biggest uh, thought that has been coming across my mind. You know, is that really uh, <coughs> fair or appropriate for uh, the decision uh, of denial? You know, I, of course, of being the chairman of the license and health. So I mean, I, I felt. To deny that, but then throughout the uh, week, you know, and I was thinking about what really makes a difference that we deny one reliable business person that, you know, something that he would probably do as good job, and we are kind of, uh, and some people already have that type of a license. That that's one of my major uh, questions that I concern about it. You know. 
Mayor Devine. Mayor. Thank you. Other person, Grisham. Okay, um, I just want to give a backstory to uh, the gentleman who is looking to have uh, the beer license. Uh, one of the questions that I asked is the proximity of his business to any other liquor stores or other places that sell alcohol. And from my understanding, there's a liquor store adjacent or right behind it. So that was one of the reasons that I voted against it. Um, and I'm not in favor of it. However, I do want to make note to what Alderman uh, Vitale stated. I don't want our committee to be looked at that we are just giving a blanket no to anybody who owns a gas station. It's not reasonable, that's not our job. Um, our job is to assess um, the business and, and its, its participation in the community and whether they should have that license or not and be responsible. So I'm not going to say that I vote against every gas station. Um, this particular one I did for that specific reason of it having a liquor store so close. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I'm going to support the, this particular license. It's a beer license only at this particular location. Um, we have granted other service stations in, the, in West Ellis full liquor licenses or beer only liquor licenses. Um, Quick Trip has one. There's a station on 96 and National that has a, a beer license. Um, I see nothing wrong with it. All of our neighboring or most of our neighboring <coughs> communities allow service stations to sell at least beer or beer and liquor at their stations. You go to New Berlin, you can get them at a lot of stations. Greenfield, um, it's, it's not an uncommon thing. It's a convenience for people. You stop, you get gas, if you want to take home a six pack of beer, I don't see anything wrong with it. So I'm going to support this. Thank you. Mayor Devine. All the person keen. Um, if someone did, from License and Health, was there a recommendation on how many coolers he was planning on having? No. There wasn't even any discussion on that, to be honest with you. Okay. okay thank you. Any other discussion? Mayor Devine, one quick question. And yep. I don't know if anybody has the answer. Will there be any sub substantive remodeling of the business as in improving the taxable value of the property and will there be new employees added based on this license? You can come up to the microphone if you can, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jasmeet Kang. I, my address is 1549 Cambridge Court in Hubertus. So basically me and um, the other gentleman, he's my partner. So we have 10 plus year experience. We, we own over two dozen gas stations in Wisconsin. So, and we have no problems in the 10 years of experience we had. So I even in this case, we are new business owners um, for this particular property we're talking about. Yes, we do have plans, coming back to your questions, to improve. Um, a remodel plan is coming. Um, to refresh the store, um, putting new car washes need to be updated and everything else. So like we had discussion today, we, we're not asking for a special permission or a special use. We just want to be on the, just to be fair, you know, just other gas stations and other similar businesses, about five to six other businesses uh, are currently hold Class A license. Um, so we just want to be on the same playing field and like we said, it's, it's a convenience thing. And the liquor store, which we have uh, right next to us, sometimes they don't open until 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, a lot of, we have a lot of customers who work overnight. You know, they come in the morning, get gas, grab a pack of beer, because that's the time they're going home. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and like I said, we, um, we, we will be more than happy to continue the conversation um, if you guys have any questions. But like I said, in 10 years of experience, and two plus dozen gas stations we own, we never had any trouble. Okay, on, on the remodel, yes. and I'm glad Steve's still here, um, are we talking about a substantive remodel that would require a site and landscape plan? And I guess, Steve, are they, do you know if they're currently in compliance? Is there anything, anything on a wish list there that we'd want better landscaping or? This is, this is the poor, well, formerly Poor Richard's location, yes. uh, BP, yeah. Okay. So that, that, that station is one of the newer stations, I guess, it, yeah. in terms of 
West Dallas gas stations. It, it was uh, built, uh, remodeled, I would say probably maybe 10, 10 15 years ago. Yes. Uh, it has uh, some nicer masonry, exterior materials, landscaping, and so on. In terms of site and landscaping compliance, it is uh, generally consistent, I would say. You know, if there is some freshening up needed, that can be done through our code enforcement. Um, but otherwise, it, uh, it appears to be in compliance with our, our site and landscaping architectural plans. Okay. I appreciate they'd be able to come up with the answer right here when it wasn't actually going to be considered on the agenda. So thank you. And just go back to my question. How many coolers were you planning on having for so beer? So currently it has uh, 12 doors for, for beer. It will be, it'll be just an addition to about three doors. We, three we're going to add okay. it yeah, to it. Thank you. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. If there are no other questions, I am going to ask. This is to uh, deny. Yes, I'm sorry. The motion is to deny per the committee <laughs> report. Earlier. Yeah, thank you for that. I was going to clarify that, and then I forgot. The motion is to deny, so if you do not want them to get a license, you would vote aye. And if you want them to, you would vote no. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Alderperson Tenorio. No. Vitale. No. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Keen. No. Lysak. No. Reinke. Aye. Rote? Aye. Stefanski? Aye. Ten, uh, six in favor, four opposed. The motion to deny is approved. Okay. Um, that concludes license and health. We are on item K. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. If there's no objection from the Alder people, I would move that the uh, consent agenda be approved as submitted by the clerk. Second. Um, I think I just ask if there's any objection. <laughs> and I don't see anyone objecting, so the rules are suspended. Um, <laughs> any, any separate action on the consent agenda this evening? I'll give you a minute because there's a lot. Okay. If there is no objection on that, then I will um, ask the clerk to call the roll on the consent agenda. Alderperson Tenorio. Aye. Vitale. Aye. Weigel. Aye. Grisham. Aye. Haas. Aye. Keen. Aye. Lysak. Aye. Reinke. Aye. Rote. Aye. Stefanski. Aye. Ten in favor, zero opposed. Motion carries. Mayor <coughs> Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move that we stand in recess until conclusion of the committee meeting. Second. Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second Aye. by Alderperson Reinke. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in recess. Aye.